What's up, Jojo in the morning, family? I hope you are having an absolute amazing day. I want to give you the third message of this three-day series. I hope you like Monday. I hope you like Tuesday. Wednesday is going to be the best day. But this is something that the Lord really, really put on my heart the other day in prayer. I was praying and I heard this one word very strongly. And this word, it was more like a a commissioning, more like a charge than anything. But I was praying and I heard the word advance. Now what's funny is I'm actually going to preach on this word Sunday. Um, And I had a, a surprise guest speaker last week that And one of the main things he preached on was advance. And so it's just a real powerful word of the Lord. And like I said, when I felt the Lord say that, it was like a charge. And my wife and I, you know, we do a few few things in life. We we have a church, YouTuber. We have a health coaching business with Optavia. Uh, Got a few more business adventures I do. And it was like I felt the Lord say move forward in everything. All at once, just kind of like, I don't play poker, but, you know, all in, push the chips all in. Mr. Sid Roth told me um, probably about two months ago, he said that the Lord is saying this is an all-in season, so you need to go in advance. Now, advancing means that you can't look to the past, you can't look behind, you can't even try to figure out all your surroundings and everything that's going on. You have to advance in this hour because it is powerful. All right. Let's give you some scripture on it. James 2, verse, oh, let's start 14. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith and does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and doesn't have food, And then the one that says to him, you know, depart in peace, be warm and be filled, and do not give them the things that they need for their body, what does it profit? I love this right here. Those also that have faith by itself but don't have works, it is dead. Faith without works is dead, okay? Social media family, I love you. I love you. I love you. That's what I say when I'm going to say something kind of harsh to people. This is what I hear all the time. I love prayer requests because I know that when we pray together, we move things in the heavens and on earth. The problem with a lot of people, and I'm talking about the old me, I used to do this. I had faith that could move a mountain. But I didn't do the work. I've heard two missionaries say this. Pray like it all depends on God and work like it all depends on me. Faith without works is dead. I absolutely love, in in services, I love healing ministry that when when I'm ministering or other people have uh, are doing ministry and they, I feel like God wants to heal some people. I've got faith to see people healed. That's faith. But then they get in the altars. They start laying hands. That's the work. Faith and the works equal healing. I remember... Uh, Apostle Ryan Lestrange and myself were doing a conference together one time, and he said, we actually had a lot of conferences together, and he said, I might preach short tonight. I said, my friend, you ain't never preached a short message in your life. He said, no, I'm going to preach a short one. He did. It was only about 50 minutes. (laughs) He said, but my faith is so high. We're going to see so many miracles tonight. My faith is so high. But he knows that when he got in the altars and where two people come together and pray in agreement, they were going to get healed. People ask me all the time, hey, pray that I'm financially blessed. Pray for financial breakthrough, finances, finances, finances. I usually type back, hey, I will pray for you. But what are you doing? What's your next step? 
What's your, what are you doing? And then when I mentor people, like I just simply take notes, a piece of paper to write down notes. I'm talking to Jim. And Jim says, God uh, wants me to start up a new mowing business, mowing business. The Lord spoke to my wife about doing something. I write it down. Three months later, they're struggling. Did you start the mowing business? No. Did your wife start what she was supposed to start? No. God gave you that. That was probably your breakthrough that you missed. Let's um, let, let's get going on what God told you to do. And so that's the thing about faith and works. Most people have poverty mentality. What's poverty? I want welfare from the government. I don't want to work. I just want the money. One time, uh, as church I was working at, these two guys, big old dudes, showed up. They're probably about 35, 40, you know, about 6'2, 6'3, what about 220, 230. They said, hey man, I wonder if we can get a handout. I said, uh, no, but I'm glad you're here. I said, because we got a huge fellowship hall that I've got to vacuum the carpet and the part that's tile, we got to mop it. And then we have to go into the gym, which is carpet, and we've got to, you know, vacuum that. And so I got a lot of work that has to be done today. And I said, let's agree on a wage and I'll pay you to do it. And they said, we came and asked for a handout. If we wanted to work, we would go get a job. They were as serious as could be. That's how a lot of people are when they go to prayer. They're not going to advance because they just want to pray all the time, but they don't want to do the work, okay? You can pray all day long and God tell you to be a missionary in a foreign country, but if you don't go get your passport, you ain't going nowhere, okay? Do you want to advance or not? If you want to advance, you will do the work. My wife and I were praying the other day because the Lord has given us some prophetic words that he's about to bless us in great abundance in, in certain things. Um, and so my wife and I were like, well, he's got plenty to work with. <laughs> we, we got a lot of things going on and we've been working on a lot of things. James 1.22, but be a doer of the word and not hearer only deceiving yourself. You will deceive yourself if you just hear the word and you think it's going to automatically come to pass. No. No. You got to be a doer. So think about this. How many words have you heard, but you're not doing anything on them? Think about it. Think about how many times God's spoken things to you. My wife and I, when, when God speaks something to us, we write it down, tell a few people, because we won't be held accountable on it. Let's go on. Psalms one. No, no, excuse me. Psalms 18, 28, 29. For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. If you do not know the direction you're supposed to go in, if you don't know how to advance, the Lord will enlighten you and he will show you the path that you're supposed to take. He will show you how to advance. Now, what you got to understand is when this is talking about you're going to be able to see your next step, where you're supposed to go, and how you will advance. Most people don't know the next step, therefore they can't advance. But the Word of God says that he will light your lamp, he'll light your fire. When you're on fire for God, you burn away the impurities. Then you're able to see purely, clearly in the direction that you're supposed to go. My God, I got myself excited talking about that. You know, the Bible talks about when, when uh, you're full of the Holy Ghost, that you can run against a troop, and by God, you can leap over a wall. 
when you got the power of God. Faith without works is dead. I remember my wife and I were at a church. We were really young. We moved away to uh, about five hours. And then we came back and we were at a church. And then when, when our time was up at that church, we went back to that church we were at 10 years before that. And there were still some of the, there were a lot of the same people at that church. Great people, kind people, saints of God, powerful prayer warriors. Stuck in the same place. You want to go to prayer meeting, they will pray the paint off the wall. Stammering lips, praying in the Holy Spirit. I'm talking, sitting over there. You've seen the old timers get so full of the Holy Ghost that they start dancing in prayer. I'm talking pray a house of fire down and stuck in the same place. They have no advancement. Full of the Spirit. No works. I heard the Lord. I heard the Lord. I heard the Lord. And don't do nothing on it. And like, <laughs> I would, I would, I was with some of these, these older, they they had a, a ladies prayer meeting, and they were like for like fifty and up, and they loved me. I was like in my twenties, and they would always talk about. They heard the Lord. They heard the Lord. And one time, I was, I guess, young and naive or just being prophetic, and I just said, hey, I hear y'all talking about y'all hear the Lord all the time, but ain't none of y'all ever doing what he says. I was being, I was just, <laughs> I didn't get asked back. I didn't get that. I did not get asked back to any of their stuff. I was just being truthful. And I didn't mean. <laughs> and I've just always had that. I heard the Lord say, "What are you going to do about it? Like, what are you going to do? You, you, you ask God for an answer to prayer, and He gave you that answer, and you aren't doing nothing with it. What in the whole wide world are you going to do with it?" I remember one time, I feel like JoJo in the morning sometime is like story time with JoJo. This couple, man, I love this couple. He prayed for a while for 10 years. She prayed for her husband for eight years. They got married. About three months later, he, he came in for counseling. He was complaining about his wife. I said, brother, you, you prayed for it. You got a wife. She's a good lady. You got a good one. Now go home. She she came in for counseling. I don't count woman alone. So with the one of the, the lady pastors and myself were in there because they were in our ministry. She was complaining about her husband. I said, "Look, girl, you uh you prayed for a husband for eight years. He's a good guy. He's a good guy." I said, "You go on home. You go on back home. You prayed for it. You had faith. Now you got to work on your marriage, okay?" And that's just what it is. You know, we, we have faith, but we don't want to work on things. I can't tell you how many people have called me, hey, teach me how to start a YouTube channel. They do it for two or three weeks and then they quit. People call me, join our health program. Oh, I want to lose 50 pounds. They lose 20 pounds and they quit. 20 wasn't the goal. 50 was the goal. People want to start a health coach. No, I need to make extra finances. They do it for a few months and they quit. You know, um, the, the scripture about be a, a doer of the word. I know people that got more prophetic words than they know what to do with. They're in the same place. They stuck. People all the time, oh, I have no, I had a guy one time came and said, I have no retirement. I have no retirement. I'm in my, my 50s. I said, whoa, you got time. You got time. A year later, I was talking to this guy. When I travel, I go to a lot of the same places every year. And, and he said, man, I need to get my finances. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
We talked about this last year. That's 52 weeks ago. You ain't done nothing. Give me your word that in the next seven days you're going to go talk with somebody. You're going to get some money invested. And I remember I pulled out a hundred, a Mallard C note. I gave him a hundred. I said, here is your first hundred to invest. I had a guy tell me one time, God's called me to start a revival hub. Next time I saw him, God called me to start a revival hub. Next time I saw him, God told me to start a revival. I pulled out, gave him some money. And I've done this to a lot of people. This is the first seed and do it. Go do it. It's like when, when, when I gave them that money, they were charged to go do it. Faith without works is dead. You got to have some work. You know, I know people who have a little bit of faith. Let me just say this. Y'all might disagree, but I don't care. I'm right. I, if I had two people, one had great faith and little work. The other one had a little bit of faith and a lot of work. I would take the one with a little bit of faith and a lot of work because they'll get more done. I know folks that are worldly as all get out. That's, how, that's country right there, all get out. They are worldly as all get out. And they prosper. And I talk to them. They're like, man, you know, I don't serve God. I don't serve God. But I tell you why I succeed in life. A guy told me this. I was like, what? That's just, just good stuff from a, just a heathen. He, he's a heathen. <laughs> he said, you know, I don't go to church. I, I, I believe in God. I don't go to church. But do you know why I succeed? I said, why? He said, because I use my God-given talent. I was like, oh my gosh. The world can succeed when they use their God-given talent because it's God-given. What happens when the kingdom-minded people use their God-given talent with the favor and blessing of God with the anointing on their life? That uh, would be something. Advance, my friends. If you need prayer for advancing, you know what to do. Go to the website, jojodawson.net. Send me a prayer request. I would absolutely be honored to pray for you. I want to ask you this. When you send your prayer request, ask yourself, what action step am I going to do? What action am I going to do? Somebody messaged me a while back and said, pray that I lose 100 pounds. I said, okay, I'll pray. Are you asking about doing our health program? Because we can lose 100 pounds on our health program. No? Okay, that's, that's cool. Are you planning on changing your diet? No? Okay. Are you going to go to the gym? They said, nope. Are you going to start walking, bike riding? Nope. I'm not doing nothing. I just want God to take it off of me. I'm like, well, I don't know if it really works like that. <laughs> Why do I say stuff like that? People ask me all the time, pray that God gives me an extra thousand a month. Okay. How about we change? How about we say, God, show me what I can do to create residual income. Instead of asking for a handout, God does not work at the welfare office. God will give you wisdom and knowledge and insight beyond your years and clarity to steward what you need to do. He is a God of more than enough. He will give you the wisdom to create what you need to create. All right. I love y'all. Hope this helped. Have a blessed day.